I'm going to continue on with some more algebra examples, and this time uh, do things a little bit differently. We were before looking at different examples of just finding a single letter. So we had one letter to find and then lots of other uh, numbers here. We can get answers that are fractions, for example. We can get nice real numbers. We can get all sorts of different things possible. Okay? We can take square roots. We can do all sorts of things. But uh, it's possible also that your equation doesn't necessarily have an answer. In other words, you've got a lot of letters depending on a lot of other letters, and it all depends on what you put in. Now this uh, has to do, well, this comes up often in many science classes. And again, uh, since I'm a physicist, uh, these are the, the equations I know best. So for example, uh, this one right here. Even if you don't know what this equation means, it doesn't matter. I could just say, you know, what does A equal? That could be the question here. And by the way, if you are concerned with this, this is actually an equation that relates to force, and this is the mass, and this is the acceleration. So for example, I can figure out all sorts of things, like if I throw something somewhere, I can figure out um, you know, how much force it's going to have once it runs into something, if I know what its mass was, and if I know something about how it slows down or speeds up. So this can tell me a lot of other things. This can tell me, for example, why uh, when I'm in an airplane and they really speed up, you know, when they're accelerating, I can explain uh, this very well by just this equation, because when the plane is taking off, the pilot is accelerating. Now, since I have a certain mass and then I'm accelerating, I can feel how much, well, I can figure out how much force I'm going to feel. And you might have felt that when you're sort of, uh, you feel like you're being you know, glued to the back of your seat, so to speak. That's because you're feeling a force. So what if I wanted to get acceleration by itself? Now see, notice that I don't have any numbers here, it's just letters, but no problem, the algebra rules work the same. So if I want to get A by itself, I want to get A which is on the right side, I want to get rid of this M that's glued up in front of it. So just like we were doing before, if I divide both sides of the equation by M, then that'll get rid of the M. That's because the M right now is multiplying the A, so to speak. So the M is being multiplied by A, or A is being multiplied by M. So that means if I divide both sides, then I can get f divided by m, that's going to be a. Now some people like to rewrite the equation and always put what they're looking for on the left side. No problem, because remember, if it's an equal sign, it means they're the same. So the left side equals the right side, well that means that the right side equals the left side. So I can easily rewrite it like this. And this means that as long as I know the force and as long as I know the mass, I can figure out the acceleration. So this is useful for finding a general answer, because this works for all values of force and all values of mass. As long as I know both of these, I can figure out the acceleration. So that's why uh, examples with algebra, you know, sometimes with only letters, with only equations, can be very useful. Uh, here's another one. This is uh, one that we use commonly in physics uh, for simple motion, but this is for uh, accelerated motion. Now you might have seen it in different ways. Some people call this a VF and VI. This has to do with uh, speeds. So for example, um, yeah, again, maybe I'm in my car here and I can figure out, for example, um, what will be my acceleration this time? Maybe I want to find A here. And I could ask, what's my acceleration? If uh, this right here, by the way, is my final speed, that's V. U is my initial speed. A is my acceleration. And S is the distance that I've traveled. So the question, I mean, even if you don't understand physics, the question could still be, here's an equation, solve for A. That means get A by itself. So I can easily do that. I'm going to want to get A on its own. Now look, there's three different things that I want to get rid of. One could argue that there's a fourth thing. There's a square here I don't like. But there's this term here, this U squared. And then there's another term. It's a 2AS. So you have to think, what should I do first? So if you want to be really uh, careful, always work with the furthest away things from your A. So for example, uh, well, the V squared is already on the other side. I'm happy with that. I want the V squared on the other side. In fact, I want to kick out the U squared and put it over to the left. I want to kick out the 2 and the S. So if I want to get rid of the U squared, that's easy. I can easily do that one first. This is a separate term. There's a plus in front of it really right now. So I can get rid of it by subtracting. So that means I can say that v squared minus u squared is going to be 2as. That's because the u squared on the right side disappeared because I, you can imagine it's like I subtracted it right here. So u squared minus u squared, well that would mean that one would cancel out with that one. And that means I would just have v squared minus u squared on the left side. So just to explain a little bit about what I've just done here. But I don't want to confuse, so let's leave it like this.
So v squared minus u squared is 2as. Now I'm almost there. I've got to get rid of the 2 and the s. Now these are all in the same term. They're all glued up against it. So I can get rid of whichever one I want first. Maybe I'll get rid of the 2 first. Now how do I get rid of a 2 that's multiplying the a? I do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing. I have to be careful to divide everything by 2. That means this whole thing on the left side is divided by 2. And that'll give me as. And then I want to get rid of the s. So I can have my final answer, then I'm going to divide by s as well, because it's also being glued up against the a. So that means I can say 2s. That will be my a value. Or I suppose I could actually make it a little bit easier to look at. I could even say, let's instead of making that equals a, we'll make a equals this. It's the same thing, isn't it? So that means knowing the final speed, knowing the initial speed, and knowing the distance I've traveled, I can find my acceleration. But keep in mind, I could have taken this equation and solved for anything else. See, I could have taken this v squared uh, equals two, uh, u squared plus 2as. And what if I wanted to find uh, instead, maybe I instead want to take the same equation, but instead of solving for a, maybe I want to solve for u, for example. Maybe I want to find out if I know the acceleration and the distance traveled, what was my initial speed? Maybe I can find that. So that's done in a similar way. I first want u by itself. So I first get rid of the other term on its side. So in other words, this 2as, it's an entire term, so I can dump it over to the left immediately. And I can do that by subtracting. Okay, so that means I get this. I get v squared minus 2as is u squared. Well, I'm almost done. I just want to get the squared out of it, so to speak. I got to do the opposite of squaring. And the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. So hopefully you know that. So the opposite of taking uh, something squared is a square root. So taking the square root of both sides will undo this square. So that means I'll have square root of v squared minus 2as. That will equal u. Now I should be careful here. Again, that's because when you square something, if you square a positive number, and a positive number times a positive number gives you a positive number. Think about this, though. What about a negative number here? If I have a negative number times a negative number, I'm also going to get a positive. In other words, now this might be a little bit uh, abstract, but you should always be very careful. Technically, your answer is plus or minus this. So just be careful whenever you're taking square roots, that a lot of times uh, your answer is going to be plus or minus. So this would be your answer here. It could be plus or minus this would be a solution. This will make more sense, hopefully, once uh, you've seen something to do with uh, quadratic equations. And you'll see that it's a curve. This is really what we're looking at. This is some sort of graph that looks a little bit like a curve. And in any case, we can do algebra with just about anything. We can have letters and numbers. We can have just letters like uh, up here. We can have like before where we had just numbers and one letter. We can do whatever we like. Algebra is just a matter of manipulating equations to get what you want. That's really what it's all about.